Yes. Why do we submit? Every one of us today has hundreds of foreign chemicals in our blood. They're not supposed to be there. I decide to find out what those chemicals are and what they do to us. Vi sitter på en tickande bomb. Sen andra världskriget har mänsklighetens användning av kemikalier fullkomligt exploderat. Från en miljon ton per år då till 500 miljoner ton nu. Kemikalieindustrin är den bransch i världen som växer allra snabbast. För närvarande omsätter den cirka 10 procent av den globala ekonomin. Det handlar om 100 000 kemikalier som vi människor har hittat på. Hur många olika kemikalier har ni hittat i mitt blod? Ja, det, det är ett 70-tal ämnen och då har vi ändå inte pressat så hårt som vi kan göra. Vi kunde säkert komma upp i ett par hundra substanser. Samtidigt ska man veta att vi har en oerhörd massa ämnen som, som kan ha effekt. Och det kan vara kroppsägna, naturliga ämnen. Och det kan vara icke-naturliga ämnen av människan framställda ämnen. Och där har vi ju en, en uppsjö av, av kemikalier som eh, eh, drivmedel, oljeprodukter, färger, eh, kosmetika, läkemedel, bekämpningsmedel, eh, mjukgörare, eh, flamskyddsmedel. Ja, många, många fler. Men problemet är att vi, vi kan ju inte säga någonting om, om cocktaileffekten. Nu har du PCB, du har bekämpningsmedel, du har några flamskyddsmedel, du har de ytaktiva substanserna. Och hur samverkar de? Det är det, är det som man beskriver som cocktaileffekt. Cocktaileffekt är ju sån en lite populär betegnelse för effekter av att man blir utsatt för många olika stoffer samtidigt, alltså på den samma dag eller inom för den samma period, från många olika kilder, från maden eller från luften eller från de ting vi omger oss med. Och där bor man populärt betegnelsen att det så kan ge cocktaileffekter. There are hundreds of chemicals in the environment that are coming from products that we are using every day. And these chemicals were declared safe dozens of years ago. And now we understand that they can disrupt the endocrine system, the controlling system of our bodies. The expert on this is Professor Theo Colburn. She has seen how very small doses of chemicals in nature have affected the wildlife. And she says the same thing happens in the human hormone system. Well, our hormone systems are very complex, and everybody must understand it goes beyond the usual sex hormones. There are a lot of hormones. Insulin is a hormone. I don't think most people understand that. And we have an epidemic of diabetes and obesity, all connected, in the Northern Hemisphere, that now, basically, uh, some of the most recent studies, and even a human study, showed a link between a very commonly used plastic called bisphenol A and diabetes, obesity, and cardiovascular problems. So not just one system. This could be the development of the brain, which basically the brain at that time is getting programmed for how an individual is going to develop later in life as well. So their behavior is being affected. Intelligence could be affected. Uh, and you know, we talk a lot about nurture, but you can't, nurture definitely can make you learn to love. It helps you learn to love. But if you're not wired correctly in the beginning, nurture isn't going to work. 
And these are the things that I worry about. I see so many children today who don't relate. They can't look at you. They're totally, totally out of control. They overreact. Uh, they don't know what's right and wrong. And it's not because someone hasn't tried and worked hard for them. The parents are not to blame. The blame lies in the chemicals that were in the mother's and father's bodies when they were conceiving that child. Every generation before our, our generation was not living as long as we are living and not as healthy as us. And now what we are seeing is the younger generation with tremendously higher incidence of cancer, of obesity, of diabetes, of neurologic disorders, of brain and behavioral abnormalities, of immune disorders. All of these are caused by environmental endocrine disruptors. And the incidence of all of these diseases in our children are much higher than in my generation. Alltså vår generation, vi, vi var ju kemikaliefria när vi föddes. Men våra barn är inte kemikaliefria när de föds. Men, men det finns ju också i, i, i samhället, alltså man säger att vi är friskare än någonsin. Och det, det stämmer säkert på vår generation. Men stämmer det på våra barn? Är de friskare än någonsin? De har otroligt mycket allergier och inlärningssvårigheter och... Och, och, och frekvensen av cancer hos barn har ju ökat otroligt alltså. At the population level, we are now able to count the percentage of children that are born with these kinds of disorders. And the list is growing. And it starts with ADHD, autism, diabetes, early childhood cancers, early childhood behavioral problems, which we now list as diseases in the United States. A juvenile crime is a disorder that can now be related back to prenatal exposure. We've got early cancers, testicular cancers in boys, obvious birth defects, no doubt that this damage happened before birth. Breast cancer has increased, testicular cancer has increased, as you know. Reproductive problems have increased as well. Obesity is an epidemic in the United States, and uh, behavioral problems and autism mm. And you know what endocrine disruptors in animals can do all these things. So you can create obesity, you can create altered behaviors, you can create cancer, and you can create reproductive problems. Meine Generation, wir sind die ersten Eltern, die schon das alles in sich haben und es an unsere Kinder weitergeben. Meine Kinder sind fünf und sieben Jahre alt und wir haben es jetzt sozusagen ihnen weitergegeben. Und wir wissen fast nicht, was es bedeutet, aber es könnte möglicherweise sehr viel bedeuten. Ich meine, sie haben keine roten Flecken auf der Haut oder sie haben nicht, dass ihnen die Haare ausfallen, aber es könnte sein, dass ähm, ihre geschlechtliche Entwicklung gestört ist, ihre sexuelle Entwicklung. Es kann sein, dass ihre intellektuelle Entwicklung gestört ist. Das hat man alles gesehen. As we've shown in our babies, uh, they're born uh, with uh a large number of chemicals in their body. And, and it's not just the breast milk. They are born that way. Um, in, our, in our infants, as young as two months, we had 50% uh, with um, uh, seven or more phthalates measurable. So uh, it's, you know, it, the placenta does not protect, which used to be, of course, what was thought. And, um, you know, it goes right in and uh, it, it circulates and might even, and this is something we're just exploring now, uh, be uh, uh, stored at higher levels in the fetus than in the mother. Well, quite frankly, Stefan, having looked very closely at how climate change is a big threat, and everyone is very concerned about this. These chemicals that are causing the problems that we are seeing now in laboratory animals, 
and be able and now able to trace into the human picture are also derived from, again, those same fossil fuels that are causing climate change. And if you look very closely, we're getting into the fourth and the fifth generation now of children who are affected. Look at the odds of those children ever being born without having some kind of a lifetime disorder where they're going to have to be cared for or they're going to have to take medication the rest of their lives. I would say, quite frankly, we should be more worried about these health effects. They are going to be more imminent in terms of human society and humankind and all living organisms on Earth than the threat of climate change. It's going to get us sooner. <laughs>